This program will introduce the parts to the system and provide the step-by-step -step procedures for installing and removing it so that it can be a ready and familiar component in any situation. Hicks consists of three major sections. The cabin section on both sides is partly made up of the forward outboard roller assembly and rail. Center outboard roller assembly and rail and aft outboard roller assembly and rail. These components utilize 26 5K tie-down fitting assemblies, eight 10K fitting assemblies, and two ring plug assemblies at station 360. Four guide roller assemblies are secured in the center of the cabin section with 10 ring plug assemblies. The second section, the ramp section, includes a ramp outboard guide rail roller assembly on both the left and right sides, and a ramp inboard roller assembly on both the left and right sides. A separate ramp support assembly is also provided. The third section, the ramp extension section, uses two identical roller assemblies and two identical support assemblies. Before installing the system, carry out the following steps on both ramp extensions to modify them if they have not been modified. Place the master drill fixture over the ramp extension so that the alignment pins are snug against the ramp extension. Use at least two C-clamps to hold the fixture in position. Using the drill fixture guide holes, drill six starter holes. And then proceed to drill larger holes between 0.396 and 0.403 inches in diameter through both sides of the extensions. The drilled holes must be within tolerance, clean, and free of burrs to ensure the proper engagement of quick-release pins during installation. To prepare the aircraft for Hicks installation, clean out all dirt and debris. Remove the loading pole on the right-hand side of the aircraft if its retaining brackets are on the floor. Detach the ground cable and secure it to the airframe nearby. Remove the three loading pole retaining brackets at stations 327.680, 348.980, and 387.680. To begin cabin section installation procedures at station 240, 320, 400, and 481.780 on both sides of the aircraft, unscrew and remove the eight 10K rings from the fitting assemblies. For each of the eight fitting assemblies, remove one of the two inboard inside screws holding the assembly and install an internal wrenching bolt and washer finger tight. Then remove the other three inside screws. If there is a protruding round head bolt beneath the aftmost 10K tie down fitting, the bolt should be removed and discarded. Install a second internal wrenching bolt and washer, finger tight. It must also be inboard. Slide the 10K fitting assembly casting into position.
insert two outboard 12-point bolts and washers and tighten. After you've installed all eight 10K fitting assemblies, ensure that the 10K fitting assembly rings are laying parallel to the aircraft, and no 5K fitting assembly rings are facing outboard before rail installation. Begin installation of the rail and roller assemblies. Angle each such that the rail bumper is clear of or just touching the buffer board. Rotate each rail to vertical. Some fore and aft movement may be necessary if interference occurs. If a floor patch causes interference problems, you will need to modify and repaint the interference area according to Hicks technical manual specifications. Using hex head bolts and washers, attach the rails to the 10K fitting assemblies. Make splice connections between the forward and center rails, and the center and aft rails. Use two hex head bolts and washers per splice. At station 360, on the left and right sides, connect a ring plug assembly to the floor-mounted tie-down ring and the rail roller assembly. Ensure that the flat side of the conical washer is down. Connect the 26 5K tie-down fitting assemblies to the remaining 24 5K floor-mounted tie-down rings and to the rail roller assemblies. At station 356, on both sides, there will be no floor-mounted tie-down rings. To install the inboard roller guides, position the forward inboard guide roller assembly on butt line 0, 0.000 so that the forward end is aligned at station 157. When installing all inboard roller guides, ensure that no 5K tie-down ring is blocked. Position the forward hatch inboard roller assembly on butt line 0, 0.000 directly behind the forward guide roller assembly. Position the center inboard guide roller assembly directly behind the forward hatch inboard guide roller assembly. And position the aft inboard guide roller assembly directly behind the center inboard guide roller assembly. Connect tie-down assemblies to the 5K tie-down rings on the helicopter floor using centerline ring plug assemblies.
To begin installation of hicks on the aircraft ramp, extend the ramp tongue. One person must then clean the screw heads, if required, of the four screws that attach the center skid pad and hold the screwdriver while resting on the ramp floor. At the same time, a second person must be under the ramp using a suitable wrench to remove the nuts securing the center skid pad. Remove the bottom center skid pad and attach the replacement ramp skid pad on the underside of the ramp. Use the previously removed hardware and BMS-5-44 sealant. Using the left and right hand outboard guide rails as reference, mark the appropriate 12 bolts to be removed from the outboard left and right sides of the ramp floor. and remove the bolts. Remove the three bolts nearest the extended left and right transition rollers. Using the two ramp roller mounting bar assemblies, and the two inboard roller assemblies. Mark, and then remove the appropriate 12 bolts from the left and right center area of the ramp floor. When finished, place the removed bolts in storage. To begin the actual installation of the ramp section, Position the left and right hand outboard guide rails on butt line 41.577 and butt line 42.432. Align the bolt holes with the outboard holes from which the bolts were removed. And attach the outboard guide rails to the helicopter ramp floor using one hex head bolt and one flat washer at the most forward bolt location on each guide rail. Secure each outboard guide rail at the remaining bolt locations using the remaining 11 hex head bolts and flat washers. Position the transition roller plates on the three holes located at or near butt line 32.024 on each side of the helicopter ramp and secure the plates to the floor using three countersunk bolts each. Loose fit the bolts before tightening. Position two ramp roller mounting bar assemblies on butt line 17.587 over the center area holes from which bolts were removed. Secure the ramp roller mounting bar assemblies to the helicopter ramp floor using four hex head bolts and flat washers each. Position the ramp inboard roller assemblies over the center area holes from which the bolts were removed. Install one countersunk bolt at or near butt line 10.00 through the forward mounting plate for both inboard transition roller assemblies. Install two hex head bolts and flat washers at butt line 7.186 and butt line 6.057 through the forward mounting plate at each ramp inboard roller assembly. Install two hex head bolts and flat washers through the remaining holes in each forward mounting plate. Install three hex head bolts and flat washers to secure each aft mounting plate to the helicopter ramp floor.
Attach each ramp inboard roller assembly to the mounting bar assemblies using two hex head bolts, flat washers, and self-locking nuts. Make certain that the flat washers are used under the component which turns, either the nut or bolt. To begin installation of hicks on the ramp extensions, position a ramp extension roller assembly on both the left and right ramp extensions so that the six quick-release pins on each assembly engage the holes drilled earlier. If required to use the ramp in the raised position for loading or unloading, Adjust the support to the proper height and position the ramp support assembly so that the support pins engage both ramp support holes in the replacement ramp skid pad. If required to use the ramp extensions, Position a ramp support assembly under each ramp extension so that the support pin is engaged. This completes the procedures for installing the hicks. Removal procedures, if required, are simply the reverse, except the 10K fitting assemblies and the ramp skid pad are left in place. Hopefully, the installation and removal of the helicopter internal cargo handling system will become an easy and well-known task. It certainly makes loading and unloading easier and faster, not to mention safer, in situations where speed is of the utmost importance.